Hello everyone and welcome back to Stray With Me. I'm Jessie and today we are building a compost bin. I have been wanting to build a compost bin for a while and I actually I think there's some people who have compost in their, not toilets, but they do compost in their vans with their food waste. And as I got into natural dyeing and living more stationary, I knew that I wanted a compost bin. But I didn't want to buy a plastic rotating bin. Those work great and I am actually going to get one of those for the camper for my compost toilet. But for my food and any green waste from gardening is going to be going in this bin. And I was actually very lucky that the pallets I got a hold of were in pretty good condition, although I am here putting together the pallets so that the broken pieces are on the inside where it's less visible especially once it starts getting more full. My pallets are sort of of different sizes. Two of them are from the same manufacturer, but the one in the back is not. So you see here, I'm setting them up in a way that their heights are the same, but the, the slats aren't going the same direction. I'm not really caring too much about making it perfectly square. It's just a compost bin made out of pallets so I'm pretty much just using the pallets themselves as a tool to make them square and making sure that they're lined up to each other. I wanted to keep this video in real time, unlike the past camber videos with all the time lapses. This is a very simple project. I did obviously edit out a lot of the repetitive bits, but it is pretty much like a 30 to 45 minute project. It took me about an hour and a half to complete because I added something at the end you'll see. And then there's also a fun little surprise kind of towards the end that we will get to shortly. I am one of those builders that puts screws in their mouths. I know that's probably not a smart choice in case I swallow them, but I'm an adult. I will make my own poor decisions. I'm sure I'll get a comment about that. So I'm just using L brackets. They are so cheap and I only needed four for this. I think I actually got eight because I thought I was going to make a complete box, but just having the four makes it super sturdy. These pallets are really high quality. And I'm using lathe screws. Um, I think that's how it's pronounced, um, or self-piercing screws. So I did not need to drill pilot holes for this. I was just using leftover screws from what I had. property that the camper is parked on and where this compost bin, there is pretty much no green growth coming up, no weeds come up. There's a very clear line of where the weeds and the green kind of grassy sort of stuff starts popping up once it rains, but the back here it doesn't. So one of the goals with living on this property and having the compost bin is trying to hopefully regenerate some of that soil and make it a bit healthier. This pile of stuff was left here by me. I knew that the compost bin was going to go here, so I just, this is all brush that was taken out of the spot where the camper ended up being parked. And it was actually kind of cool as I was moving it to see where on the bottom it has already started decomposing in just a couple months. So 
see me taking a closer look to see. <laughs> and actually, I remember when I was doing some research on composting that I guess it's a common belief that it's just gonna smell rotting and gross, but it should just smell like wet dirt. And when I started turning up that pile, it definitely just smelled like wet dirt. I do have some interest in maybe doing some worm farming, if that's something you guys are interested in, let me know. I know it's a really great way to regenerate soil. I'll probably be throwing these kinds of videos, these small DIYs, in with the camper build, because obviously I can really only host a camper renovation video basically once a month. And I'm still doing little things like this. I have plans for a kind of a potting bench slash natural dye bench um, in the future. So again, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. And I really just enjoy using reclaimed materials. I think it's better for the environment and it's also cheaper. We are obviously in a recession and inflation's happening. It's just things just kind of are, are not kind of they are very much more expensive and it's just better for the environment and also better for our wallets to just reuse what we have and find cheaper options i don't know if you can kind of see in the top corner that this is a little wonky. I ended up going back and unscrewing it and rescrewing it to make it line up. Um, it was just kind of leaning towards me and I didn't notice because clearly I'm at like eye level with the palette and can't see from the back end that it's not lined up. That does end up getting fixed. You can't really see with the sun flare right there, but. If you ever work with palettes, make sure you get heat treated palettes. The other ones are, t are treated with some chemical that is really bad for you. And it, especially in this case, I'm trying to have a compost bin so I can regenerate soil and put it back in my garden. So I don't want any sort of nasty chemicals going back into the soil again. So here I'm adding this cross beam that's going to help support with the door and you will this is the point where I make a decent mistake that I end up hurting myself so if you don't like uh, I don't show any blood but if you don't like seeing injuries or accidents happen I would suggest skipping ahead maybe like a minute um, or yeah I would just I would suggest skipping ahead a minute and we'll see you back <laughs> so if you notice I did not switch to a pilot hole drill bit I switched screws I'm not using self-piercing screws and I'm just trying to force a very large three inch screw in and yep. that was more of a shock than anything I got very lucky I could have gone right through tendon or it's not so much that I think it would have it well it did got this did actually go through my hand it's the very edge of my hand by my pinky it hurt like a mother but it is already healing I, I filmed this like five days ago and it's healing really well so Unfortunately, I did film this on a Sunday. I did this build on a Sunday and I live across the street from the fire department. And if so, if I did this on a weekday and I was like really worried about my hand, I could have gone over to the fire department to have them patch me up. But I just washed my hands really well and grabbed a clean paper towel and held pressure to it and just got right back into the build. That's where I noticed that there was skin on my bit. So cleaned that off. <laughs> And I also brought out my pilot hole drill bits so that I could properly screw these cross beams in. 
and that should have been what I did in the first place. That was a big mistake that I clearly paid for, so learn from my mistake. And it's funny to me that, knock on wood, I haven't hurt myself with a any sort of saw, but I ended up hurting myself with a drill bit. And this is not the first time I've jammed that into my hand. I Another time I, it was like in the fleshy part between your thumb and pointer finger, that kind of meaty bit. Luckily it was again right where the skin was and not where the muscle is. So it again, it, that time it did not go all the way through my hand. This time it did. So I think after two times, hopefully I have learned my lesson and I just, by default, just always do pilot holes. So I am not adding the top door or the side door now, and probably not for a little while. I don't have another pallet to do that with. I'm going to be deconstructing a pallet to do those doors because it'll be a lot lighter. But for now, I'm leaving it open because in this case, it was actually much easier to shove all of that brush into the side like that, which is why I left it open. But then I also figured that it's warm and there's also chickens around, like wild chickens, so if they want to eat some of the food, it doesn't really bother me and there's nothing really there. there. I've never seen any raccoons in this area, so yeah, not a big deal for me. But I'm doing the two doors because once it's full and everything has decomposed and it's ready to be brought into the soil, I would be able to open that side door and just shovel things out easily. But in this case, like when it is full and I'm adding that top door, I'll be able to just top load things and not open that side door and have everything come falling out. So that's why I'm doing both. And also why I added that top bar so that there's something for the top door to lean against when it's closed. Thank you so much for watching if you made it to the end. I'd also like to leave a special thank you to my patron, Frank the Enhancer Van. If you would also like to become a patron, it starts at only $3 a month, which is actually less than a cup of coffee at most places. Thank you, inflation. So make sure you're also following my social medias that will all be linked in the description box. I post more frequently there, especially on stories, and you'll see more real-time updates with the camper. The next video is going to be about the camper. The insulation is coming out and after that we're gonna start waterproofing. So make sure you're subscribed and leave a comment, like the video, all of that stuff really helps me out and pushes me to more people. Here I am oogling my hard day work, the entire hour and a half it took me to build this. It's always great to take a second step back and look at your, your work. It always feels good.